Well, it's about time somebody did a full review on the dive portable lungs. We have our tank, safety instruction papers, a handle, tube, extra parts, multi-tool, and the base for the pump, manual hose, and pressure gauge. That's pretty much it for that. Uh, our first step is to install the gauge into the base of the pump. Mine were already installed, but just to show you here, you can see the first and second location where you're supposed to install it. The second step is to check the O-ring, make sure it's not broke and make sure it's there. We have to then install the main body part to the base of the pump. It's pretty self-explanatory. You want to just put the base on the floor and then thread the tube in. I do want to say never to over tighten any of these threads. Uh, a lot of the metal we're using is soft. So you really don't want to over tighten any of it. Step five, you'll be installing the hose. You're going to want to take the male part of the hose and insert it into the lower hole of the base. You want to hand tighten this and then give it a nice snug, never to over tighten. Next, we'll be installing the gauge into the top hole of the base. And then we'll just tighten it and make sure it's nice and snug into the base. Step eight and nine will go hand in hand. You'll be installing the handle and then tightening the screws. Make sure they're nice and snug as well. That we're done installing the bike pump, we want to take a look at our two gauges. The black one represents how much air, how much PSI is currently in our tank at the moment. The white one shows how much air is on demand via two-year regulator. Now we want to start pumping, so the first thing we have to do is make sure our valve is closed completely by turning that counterclockwise. Next, we're going to be taking the dust cover off of our nipple so we can insert the female side of the hose. By doing that, we'll pull back the female side of the hose and then insert it forcefully into the nipple and then you will hear a click. Once we are done with that, we can go to the back of our pump and then turn this valve clockwise, tightening the air inside. Now we can start pumping, but how long do we pump for? Well, I did a test. First of all, we do have to reach 3000 PSI. That is the maximum PSI our tank can handle. Now, with that being said, I went from 0 to 1000 PSI in just 10 minutes. After that, I did have to stop and take a break, but right after my 5 minutes was up, I started pumping again from 1000 to 2000 PSI. I do want to go on record and say the sheet does say not to pump for more than 5 minutes consecutively. When I first purchased this item, uh, I didn't really understand why, so I went ahead and went over 5 minutes anyway. And uh, I, I did immediately figure out why you shouldn't pump over five minutes. Uh, the reason being that it gets really hot at the base, um, exactly 102 Fahrenheit apparently, uh, pumping for 21 minutes. Um, I didn't find any withdrawals though. Uh, it did get hot and no O-rings would burst. The air was the same quality, so I found that I just keep pumping anyway. You can see now that I've pumped from 2000 PSI to the maximum 3000 PSI. And as you can see, it took me exactly 31 minutes and 38 seconds. Not to forget that I did take two five minute breaks. I'm pretty sure if you had a friend that was quite average in strength, you could probably get this done in 25 minutes to 30 minutes. Now the next step is very important. You have to release the air out of the pump. If you don't do this, you will possibly break an O-ring. Make sure to do it very slowly as well, because if you just release it, it will come out very fast and then you're liable to break an O-ring. You can disconnect the hose from the tank by pulling back on the clip, as you can see here. Now you're ready to put this strap on. Uh, as of now, I only see two ways of doing this. Uh, the first one is putting this over your shoulder. I see this a lot in pictures over the time and uh, it feels really nice honestly because it's just the weight is on your back and the hose is quite flexible. Um, there is one major problem with this setup though. It's the fact that it's on your back and if you want to see the two gauges on your tank you literally have to prop it up and turn your head to the right almost as far as you can go just to get a peek at how much air you have left. The second way to strap this on is under the shoulder and I see this a lot more in videos and it makes more sense to me uh, due to the fact that it feels nice and you can also turn it under your shoulder 
This way you can get a peek at how much air you have left in your tank. Obviously it's a lot safer because you can constantly check when you need to go up. Now that you're at your dive location and then you're ready to go down, you're going to be opening your valve to exactly 100 PSI. You can go up to 140 PSI, but once you go past that, you're going to be free throwing air out of your regulator. And we obviously don't want that. Next, you'll be purging your regulator to make sure air is indeed on demand. And now you're ready to go scuba diving. Uh, I do have a video of me actually testing this. I'll put that in the description. And also I'll be putting the safety manual and instructions so you can take a look at that as well. You'll be down there for about 10 to 15 minutes. You'll keep checking for when you're in the red zone on your gauge. Red zone is exactly 750 PSI. So basically once you're under a little bit of a thousand, that's when you come up. Then you'll close your tank by turning the valve counterclockwise. Then you purge your regulator to make sure there's no pressure in your hose. Now I've been using dive portable lungs for a while now. And if you were to ask me, what would you give this in total rating of stars? Well, I'd have to go on the first star. My first star that I'd rate would have to be price. Now, the first thing I'd like to look at is the Dive Portable Lung Starter Kit price. Right now, it sits at a whopping $500. For right now, we'll forget about shipping cost. I would also like to mention when I first purchased this, I did find the $100 off coupon code. So if you guys are really thinking about buying this, uh, just be aware this is a thing and it might be still going. Comparing the Dive Portable Starter Kit to actual scuba gear is kind of easy. Mainly for the fact that most scuba gear costs around a thousand. Even its other competitors like the Mantis Pro Pack are still kind of expensive. Just to the fact that you still have to be scuba certified to use them. I can safely say this is at least a 75% of a star. The next star on my list is definitely going to be quality. Now I've definitely seen this pump before. It's definitely not from dive portable lungs directly. So the overall quality of the pump is perfect. What I don't like is the regulator. The regulator feels kind of cheap uh, from other ones that I've used before. And also these analog gauges aren't the best. The reason for that is that they're a little bit too small and you definitely can't really tell when the red zone is coming. I find myself constantly looking back at my tank to make sure I'm not under a thousand PSI. When you're in 30 feet of water, it's kind of scary not knowing what PSI you're at. But overall for the price, I can definitely give this a full star. The next star on my list is definitely comfort. And what I mean by that is the overall feel of it. For the most part, on, on your back it feels quite good uh and in water it feels even better you you don't even notice it's there for the most part it also depends on how you carry it via over the shoulder or under the shoulder whatever works best for you but and just overall comfort of this satchel is is perfect for diving in all types of water so so giving this a full star is pretty easy for comfort my fourth star is going to be support and when I say support, no, I don't mean your back and whether or not this supports it. No. What I really want to know is how does Dive Portable Lungs interact with this community and how does the community interact with them? Now, I want to take you back to their Kickstarter. They use other platforms to raise money, but this was their most successful way to do it. Cameron here made a pledge of $5,000, but he exceeded that and made almost $55,000 with only 134 backers. This isn't really what I want to show you. What I really want to show you is the comments. And let's just say the majority of these comments are not good. Almost 90% of the comments here are negative. Most people just want a refund. Some of them are trying to say they got scammed, mainly because things weren't set out at the right time. You weren't getting the correct items or weren't getting the items at all. Overall, just a lot of angry people. I even tried to reach him through email twice and uh, well, to my surprise, I did not get a reply. Yep. Truth. Ah, now this is a weird one, but you'll get what I mean in a moment. What I mean by truth is, are they giving an accurate description of their product? Are they just juggling around numbers? Does this tank actually last 20 minutes? No, no, it does not. It lasts 10 to 15 minutes. So why does it say on their website and everywhere else that it says up to 15 minutes or even 15 to 20 minutes? And how come every time I go to your website, your dive portable lung starter kit is always on sale? Whatever happened to this case, you're going to include in the package. In the end, you do really have to understand the whole purpose of the product. The whole purpose was so that people like you and I could go out and scuba dive wherever they wanted, when they wanted, without having to buy $1,000 worth of equipment just to scuba dive for a few minutes a day. And that's exactly what this product does. It does exactly that and nothing more. So, in conclusion, uh...
Oh, 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 oh,